Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to the iSpring Solutions webinar. Thank you very much for joining us today as we are going to be talking about how to be a top-notch e-learning producer. My name is Paulina, I am a community manager at iSpring and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. And as a speaker, I have invited Marcelo Luin, he is an e-learning production manager. Hello Marcelo, how are you doing today? Hi, there, Henry. Hi everybody. <laughs> Okay, wonderful. So um, this will be not a necessarily iSpring related webinar, but more of an approach shared by the expert. And of course, at the end of the webinar, we're going to have a Q&A session. So guys, if you have any questions, comments or concerns, don't hesitate to submit them in the question box. And you may find it on the right side of the GoToWebinar panel somewhere at the bottom. And right now on the screen, you should see how it what it looks like. So yeah, you're welcome to submit your questions right there. Okay, so I think that at this point I'm ready to pass the mic over to Marcelo. So let me do that right now. Sounds good. Do I get to ask questions too? <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. It's, I don't know if my screen is showing. Yeah, so I can see your screen and I hope you guys can see it too. Okay, so um, now showing the video here, I want to make sure that there we go. All right, so you guys should be seeing my screen now. Let me go full page. All right. Mm -hmm. Everything looks good? Yep, so far so good. All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much, Paulina. I appreciate it. I know I no longer see you because now I have the uh, PowerPoint here. Um, one thing, I have the camera in front of me, so it's it's blocking a little bit of my presentation, but if we run into problems where I start getting cut off, um, just tell me and I'll go ahead and shut off the camera so that way um, the bandwidth is conserved. But uh, welcome to how to be a top-notch e-learning producer. Um, like Polina said, I'm Marcelo Lewin, an e-learning production manager at Service Titan. And I'm also a creator of HowToCreateVR.com, a website all about VR, and I'll tell you about it in just a second. If any of you guys have any questions uh, later on, if you want to reach out, I'd love to connect with people. You'll see my name and my email at the bottom of the presentation. So just feel free to reach out whenever you want. So I'll give you a quick background about myself. I'm an e-learning production manager. I uh, currently have a team of three e-learning developers, and we are uh, tasked with the creation of uh, lots of tutorials and simulators and assessments and videos and podcasts uh, to help onboard our customers into the application that we sell. So we stay very, very busy. I'm also a podcaster. I've done lots of podcasting before. I have a current podcast on uh, about VR and the creation of VR. I've been a filmmaker, still shoot video, um, especially now focusing more on the 360 video uh, for VR. I've been an entrepreneur and I go back and forth between being an entrepreneur and working for somebody. Created a couple of websites, three of them actually, that ended up getting acquired um, by other companies. I started my career as a developer um, a web developer, so I still code and um, I do it more for fun. I know that's really geeky, but it's kind of like my fun thing. And currently, besides being um, really focused on e-learning, I'm really addicted to virtual reality. I discovered it pretty recently and, um, of course, from the gaming side of it, but uh, now I'm looking at it from the e-learning side of it because uh, virtual reality for training is um, is actually really, it's going to be really big and really powerful. So um, because of that, I created a side on on the side. Um, my, during my free time, after I'm done with the family stuff, I um, stay up late or get up super early and work on my website called HowToCreateVR.com, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's all about how to create virtual reality. So it's really focused on the creators. Oh, that. So just check it out whenever you get a chance. I'm still working on it. I'm going to be launching a full site uh, later on, uh, but right now you can sign up to get uh, more information. I'm going to take a sip of water here. And it is water. All right, so um, what do I need to do to be a top-notch e-learning producer? So there are, as a producer, 
in general, there are many things we have to do. And as a top-notch e-learning producer, whatever you want to classify that as, communication is number one. That's at the top. You have to, even though it's at the bottom of the presentation here, it is at the top of, of what you need to do. You have to be very clear in your communication style. You have to, you're going to be speaking with and uh, interfacing with a lot of team members. And if your communication is not top notch, you, there's no way you can be a top notch uh, producer. Next up is organization. You have to be extremely organized. And I mean, you have to do tasks, checklists, you have to do timelines, there's so much you have to do. And I'm sure you guys are just like me, but you work on tons of different projects all at the same time. So if you're not organized, um, it's going to be hard to be this top-notch um, e-learning producer. You should follow standards and you should have standards in place as well um, as a top-notch uh, producer. If you're organized and you have clear communications and you have standards, then consistency will follow. But you have to be consistent to be able to accomplish all of these things. I'm going to expand on these a bit more. Um, of course, you're going to be working with a lot of timelines, which means you have to stick to timelines. Um, you have to make sure people stick to timelines. And one of the things that I am huge on is production quality. And many people, I, I know what it's like where you need or you want to put out as many, uh, as much content as possible, and that means cutting on your production quality. But if we end up doing that, then what is the difference between you and the person in another department that has a screen capture program and a cheap mic and decides to do a quick screen recording and put that out. I, I submit that there is no difference then. So for us as top-notch e-learning producers, we have to emphasize production quality. And there are ways to really produce high quality content and deliver it in, short, uh, in a short time. And I'll explain that. Of course, as, as a producer, you're going to be working with SMEs or SMEs, however you want to pronounce that. Um, but your subject matter experts, you're going to be working with them. And um, they're a special bunch. You have to know how to work with them. You have to know how to talk to them. You have to um, figure out a way to get them to uh, deliver what you need. So the other thing you need to do as a, te as a um, producer is be a technologist. Um, being a technologist is really important. You can't just manage the people and the timelines and, and the, the project. You also need to understand the technology behind it. Um, it's really important to be able to do that because um, you need to know what's coming up or what you can use today to, to do this high production quality quickly. You need to inspire people. Um, you're going to be working long hours or you are working long hours and you're your team is working long hours. Um, you need to inspire people so you can get the best out of them um, during those long hours. You also want to inspire your SMEs and anybody else you work with. So that's to me is a very important part of being a top-notch um, producer. You also need to be a visionary, and that to me goes into like being a technologist. But but that it's technologist is more like what what do we have today? that we can use to make things better. But a visionary is, what are we looking at five years from now? How are we going to uh, adjust our, our learning techniques? And for example, for me, VR is the next frontier, and VR is gonna be really huge in training. So um, that's part of being a producer too, is not just producing content, but also knowing what's coming up so you can produce the best type of content. All right, so that's what how I see a top-notch um, producer, right? During the during the presentation, please feel free to ask questions. Like Polina mentioned, type it in, and then uh, we'll get to them uh, later on at the end of the presentation. So, um, and Polina, please, if um, I'm not sounding good or something's going on, please feel free to interrupt me, um, and sure. we'll continue otherwise. So, how do we get there? How do we get to where we are today to becoming this top-notch? producer. So I'll tell you how we got there, the, the story of how we got there. We, we started out with a problem. Um, it was a pretty big problem, actually. We were creating really high quality tutorials, all sorts of content, really high quality. But 
it was taking us up to five weeks to go from the idea to publish. And that was just way too long. It, we needed to drastically reduce the time to market because otherwise we, there was no way to get through that entire backlog that we were uh, trying to get through. And as I started out before at the beginning, I wanted to maintain, and I say I because it was a challenge that my boss posed to me was like, we need to put out a lot more stuff. Does that mean we need to cut our production quality? And I'm like, no, we cannot do that. Um, because it'll be hard to justify our department if we do that. So we needed to drastically cut the time to market, but still maintain the production value. So instead of saying, no, it can't be done, uh, forget it, we decided to, okay, let's look at what are the issues? What's causing us, um, what's causing all this delay? Why is it taking so long? So we started looking at everything and we looked at all of the phases of pre-production, production, and post, all the way to publishing. So the there were two main, two big things that was taking us a long time. One was getting feedback from SMEs, and I'm sure most of you are probably gonna be able to type in the questions in, in there that you have the same problems, right? Um, getting feedback from SMEs during pre-production, during production, and during post is always very hard. Nothing against um, the SMEs, it's just that they're busy doing their thing, we're busy doing our thing, and that's how it goes. The other thing that was taking a long time, and I mean a long time, was rendering projects. So rendering um, our content out of the tool we were using. And the problem was that not only do we render when we're done with the content, but then when changes come in and we have to make changes, that's re-rendering again. So it was taking way too long for that. Also, the current tool set we had just wasn't scaling for us. It's a great, it was a great tool set, but as we were growing and as we were getting more need for a co to put out content, it just wasn't scaling. From our workflow perspective, we needed to come up with standards and procedures to assure the consistency across all producers and projects. So we were all doing great work but we weren't all consistent. So one, one uh, tutorial looked a little bit different than the other. We didn't have all this consistency stuff. So we set out to look for solutions. So starting with pre-production. One of the issues we had is that the producer was also the presenter. And I don't know, I don't know how many of you guys are doing that, where you're not only the producer, but you're also the presenter. We, we started out with that model, and that model is great because sometimes you don't have to depend on the SME to come and present. The problem was that now we needed to become experts in everything that we needed to present, or at least for that tutorial, right? We needed to know the content really well for that tutorial to come through um, as honest as possible. So that took a lot of time, and it also required SMEs to approve every aspect of it. During pre-production, they needed to approve the con they needed to approve the outline, then the script. Um, they needed to correct us when we were wrong, so on and so forth. So what we did is we changed the model from becoming, um, being the producer and presenter to the producer's just producing. That's all we did, focus on production. And, the, and then we partnered up with SMEs in various different departments that were experts in their particular uh, feel that we were trying to cover in the tutorial and that drastically changed the turnaround time because they don't need to become experts and take time to learn what to present. They already know that. And then we could focus on helping them all through the entire production process. So that helped quite a bit. Sorry, I went the wrong way. Um, so the approval time, again, was um, getting SME approval on an outline and script was taking way too long. But now, because we were partnering with the SMEs or SMEs, um, and they were presenting, there was no extra approval process on, on the subject required. Basically, they just needed to make sure that the outline they wrote was correct. Now, sometimes they partner up with other SMEs to make sure that you know somebody double checks them. But in general, the, the process, uh, just really sped up quite a bit by switching the model from 
the producer presenter being the same person to the producer producing presenter presenting. The other thing we had was uh, we had no templates to get started quickly uh, for designing and for scripting. Uh, for example, like iSpring has lots of templates and they have a big library that you can go into and, and, and search for and get started very quickly. We had none of that kind of stuff. Um, so that was a problem that we ran into. The solution was to create um, templates for uh, the course design, scripting, and assessment creation. I'll show you those um, templates that we created um, that were in, in Google Docs um, in just a minute. But creating templates was a big portion of what we needed to do. Also, we had a lack of consistency. There was no checklist to make sure everything is completed by the producer and to guarantee a consistent experience for the talent. Like I said, um, during pre-production, were, we were all doing a great job, but we were doing things differently. Now, what we did is we created a producer's checklist, which I'll show you, which tracks every single uh, task needed to be accomplished during pre-production. Um, actually, it, it tracks pre-production, production, and post. It tracks everything, and I'll show you that. But it also includes um, what to do, when to communicate, what to say um, when you're communicating. So the message is also consistent across all developers. So when people hear from us from the department point of view, they're hearing from a department. It's, it's a consistent voice. It's a consistent um, deliverable. So some pre-production tips, tips for working with SMEs. What we do, and these are things that work for us, they may work for you, may not, but we have a studio and we bring them over and um, let them mess around. We give them a, an overview of the studio, we show them the equipment, because remember, they can be intimidated, intimidated by all this. A lot of people, you put a microphone like this one in front of their face, or you put a camera in front of their face and they just completely freeze. Um, so you want to get them very, very comfortable with the equipment that they're going to be working with uh, when you're recording. Also, I never start, I never invite them over to the studio and go, okay, let's start recording right now. It all starts with a conversation. And I mean, hey, how's it going? How's, how's the family? How's your vacation? Blah, blah, blah. And you, you're just getting them extremely comfortable. And they get so comfortable that literally when, for example, this camera has a little light, a blue light on, when that light goes on, it doesn't bother them anymore because they're already very comfortable speaking with you. And that's really, really important, that relationship, but getting them comfortable. So having a conversation before recording is an important thing. The other thing I let them do is I let them practice and listen back. So we literally, um, before we do any real recording, I just say, I turn on, if it's a podcast, we just start talking and then I play it back. Or if it's a screen recording, we actually do a screen recording. I tell them, hey, show me whatever you wanna show me. Show me the, the last thing you did for a customer. Let them record it and let them listen to it afterwards. So they get an idea of what, what they're gonna get. Leading them. Um, it's important that we as producers lead our talent. And what I mean by that is you're there because you're a professional as a producer. They're there because they know the subject. They don't know anything about editing. They don't know anything about um, um, what it's going to sound like, what it's going to look like. Um, they don't know anything about writing the script. S sometimes they write a script so it's read um, for reading versus for presenting, and that's a very different way of writing. So you need to lead them. You need to make suggestions. You need to tell them, no, let's try it this way. Or you need to tell them, hey, you know, maybe we can do it again, but with a little more energy. And they like that kind of stuff. Um, you don't have to agree with everything they say. It's okay. Um, but leading them and being the, the leader during the recording session and even during pre-production, it's extremely important that you do that. Of course, um, provide a script or an outline. Don't let them just, you know, write things on their own. Provide a basis, and I'll show you what we do. We actually give them examples, so that way they know where to start. Again, going back to communication, communicate clearly. That is extremely important to do. Um, if you don't communicate clearly, you can't set expectations. You, you can't um, um, 
you won't get what you want out of them. So literally clear, clearly communicate and communicate via conversations, one-on-one, -on -one. communicate on the phone, communicate via, we use Slack a lot, communicate via email. Um, I mean, I'm, I believe in over-communicating versus under-communicating. So some tips with uh, uh, working with your SMEs, some more tips, I mean. Um, have a pre-production meeting. Everything starts with a pre-production meeting where we talk about give them all the documentation, uh, go through the documents with them, give them a tour of the, um, of the studio, explain what the process is like, talk to them about editing that, hey, this is, we're gonna be shooting it out of sequence, but don't worry about it. We're gonna be editing all this and you're gonna sound good and things like that. Set expectations. You want to make sure you set expectations because they need to know what they're getting into. And hopefully you've done this way before the, your pre-production meeting. But it's important to emphasize what are you expecting from them. Um, you don't want to lie to them. You want to be honest because you can't say, oh, you know, we'll take care of everything. Don't worry about it. You just have to present because that's not the truth. The truth is they have to put an outline together. They have to psych themselves up to present, to record, to go through the process. They're going to have to review the product later. So there's things they have to do. So make sure you set expectations. Make it fun. That's really important. Uh, we know creating e-learning is very serious uh, business, but make it fun. To me, it's like um, almost like making a movie. So you know, I bring them over to the studio, have some fun at the studio. Um, we take pictures of them while recording because then we have a Slack channel where uh, we call it Walk of Fame, um, and we post whoever recorded that day, you know, with the headphones on and the microphone and everything, we post it there and the whole company gets to see them and they end up texting it to, to their family. Make it fun. That's really, really important. Have them respect your time. It's really important that they know, they understand that, yes, they're busy, but you're busy too. And what I mean by that is that if you, if you guys agree to a certain day deliverable, then that needs to be met. Now, of course, the reverse goes as well. You need to respect and appreciate their time, which means if you're going to have expectations of them, you need to tell them what you will be doing and what expectations they should have of you. And that means respecting their time and definitely always appreciating this means because, you know, a lot of them in a company end up volunteering or volunteering, right? They get volunteered and, um, you know, they also have other duties they're working on. So always, you know, be very appreciative, appreciative of, of their time. This is a collaborative project. It's like making a movie, basically. So, you know, you're going to be collaborating with a lot of people. So this is an I need to win kind of attitude. This is, hey, the ultimate goal here is to make you, the SME, sound super professional and to make us look great as well as a department that puts out great content. So we're gonna collaborate and work together. Also, I'll see this a lot, don't take it personal. Sometimes people take things very personal, don't take it personal. I know we, we're in a, a culture of sensitivity here now, um, but don't take things personal. It's just, it's just a, a work we're doing together and let's get through this and do it uh, right and let's let's have fun with it so those are some tips that i recommend um, tips for improving approval time agree on a timeline and i mean you sit with your SME, and, and i'll show you in the document how we break it apart but you agree on a specific timeline and then that's what you're going to stick with um no excuses well there are some excuses sometimes but most of the time people deliver on time Follow up with them. So if you have a pre-production meeting happening in a week, send them an email uh, two days before and maybe the day before saying, hey, looking forward to meeting with you tomorrow. Um, if you have a recording happening in three days, send an email the day before. Hey, looking forward to doing the recording with you tomorrow. If you just finished recording, send them an email afterwards saying, hey, great job on the recording. It's all up to me now. We're going to be editing here. Um, I will get the video to you X date, and I expect your 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 approval or changes by this date. Follow up on everything. That's going to help out constantly. And you can follow up on email, follow up via Slack or Skype or whatever other kind of tool you use. 
but following up and always a friendly follow-up. Um, it's not like, hey, we're, what's going on? It's more like, hey, just a quick reminder. You know, this is due tomorrow. If you have any problems or questions, reach out to me, but always do follow-ups. You'll be amazed of, because you know, the reality is they get busy and they forget about your stuff. So it's up to us as producers to remind them, hey, hey, this is coming up. Can you uh, make sure that uh, you get it to me? Confront issues immediately. If there are issues, any issues, doesn't matter what it is, confront them immediately, get it over with. Um, it's gonna help you a lot. Don't think, don't let things pass. Oh, it'll get better. Oh, you know, they'll, they'll get back. No, 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 no. You confront them immediately and take care of the issue right there. That's what a top-notch producer uh, will do. You take charge. Um, again, this goes to the follow-up, have multiple checkpoints. So in other words, um, follow it it really goes with the follow up the, the checkpoints is if you have a a recording coming up just have multiple checkpoints between now and the recording date that says hey do you need anything from me or hey here's a document to help you in the recording again after the recording just have multiple checkpoints that help with that follow up find alternate SMEs we have a list of people that we work with and that we work with and that we're hoping to work with and in every project, we always have the main SME, but sometimes we'll have a, a backup SME because you know the reality is there's some people, especially the real good SMEs, they're super busy. And unfortunately, sometimes they really wanna do the tutorial or the content, but what happens is they get called on something and that becomes their priority and their boss says, no, this is your job now. So that means that you've gotta have alternate, uh, alternate SMEs. Now, sometimes it doesn't work out either. Sometimes there's personality or whatever. Something didn't go, have your alternates meet and then explain to them that, hey, you're gonna be the alternate. If anything happens, um, it'll be great for you to jump in and build a list of them. Being honest, be honest. If you're running late, be honest. Um, if there's some issue, if you recorded something and oops, I forgot to hit the unmute in the microphone, be honest, don't lie about it, just be honest with them because then they're gonna be, uh, end up being honest with you. It's really important um, to be straight up about stuff. And when you're creating documents, make them easy to use. Uh, create checklists. I, I can't emphasize checklists enough. It's so important uh, to create checklists because it's really gonna help you stay on top of everything. Uh, make them shareable. So for example, Google Docs, great way to share documents. Keep them consistent. So that way all developers, um, all members of your team have the same style of documentation. And then create them as templates. So for example, and I'll show you these documents, but I've created, I think uh, we had the design doc, we have um, the checklist, producers checklist doc, a script, but instead of storing them in a centralized location and people grabbing those, you can submit them in Google Docs, you can submit, submit them as templates. So when people go and create a project, um, for example, we're meeting, let's say, with uh, a, a new SME and we create all the documents that we need. We're gonna need a design doc, we're gonna need a script doc. Well, all we do is say a new doc from template and then select that template um, and then become standard. And then you can always go back and edit the template and everybody gets the same document always. So create them as templates. All right, before I show you these documents, I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the pre-production workflow. And Polina, I'm, I'm not tracking time here. I'm not sure how much time I have left over. If I need to speed up, jump in and tell me, hey, Marcel, I'll speed it up. Oh, I think we have like 20 more minutes for you to Ooh, speak. All right, I need to speed it up then. <laughs> all right. We have a lot to go still. All right, um, pre-production. The pre-production begins by recruiting the SMEs. Um, and we recruit the SMEs via email, Slack channels, we have a list of SMEs that we go to, so we literally reach out to them. Then we have the preliminary meeting, give them a studio tour, go through um, over, we go through all the um, documentation that they're gonna have. Um, we work on the design document. We actually uh, get together, fill out most of the design document, and then let them go to finish it off, and I'll, I'll show you that. And then that day, that preliminary meeting, we set up a recording date. So they don't leave until the timeline is actually in the design document, agreed upon both of us. Then um, before recording, before we switch to production mode, um, we follow up with reminders, 
Um, once we get the design document back from them, we create a script from that outline that they've designed. Um, and then we email them the script. So that way they have the script that they're going to be using for dur or during production. And we tell them, hey, if there's any changes, just change the script. Don't touch the outline anymore. Um, and then uh, we send them a recording reminder like, hey, looking forward to you coming over tomorrow to the studio to do recording. Again, all these touch points and follow ups are so um, we get them in and out, right? In and out quickly. And that's when pre production ends. All right, so I'm going to show you some uh, documentation. All right, I'm going to minimize here. Let's see. So excuse me real quick while I find my stuff. And everybody could see this, right? Uh, well, yeah, we can see your screen. Perfect. Now I just want to make sure everything's still good. All right, so this is the producer's checklist. Um, it's a document that basically tracks information. It's got multiple tabs for each phase, okay? So first one is it just shows you basic information about the tutorial, who the producer, presenter, the SME is, if there's a second SME like for reviewing. Um, during pre-production, you can see there's a checklist here and it's you've got, um, this is like it's completed here. So it's a pull down menu that um, you select to complete or say you're not necessary. Here's the task. And this is suggested email, Slack message, or other kinds of notes that you put. So for example, preliminary meeting with presenter, presenter studio completed. We have a dashboard where we update the status of this particular um, um, uh, uh, tutorial. We, if we identify a second SME, um, the, here's information. This is what to email them. So you can see hi SME reviewers. So obviously you cut and paste this into the email. You change anything that's in, in brackets because that needs to be customized. Design document completed by producer. Design document presenter, uh, presenter tips send to presenter. So as a producer, we need to literally during pre-production go through all of these steps. And um, here's suggested you know, ways to communicate to them via email or Slack um, with the information of what to say. So for example, hi present, it was great meeting with you today. I'm looking forward to working with you on this tutorial. Here's the design document. You can fill out all the fields in red, blah, blah, blah. Then we would cut and paste the presenter tips and the document um, URL there. So as you can see, there's lots of steps that I will never forget from going from one tutorial to another to another, even if I'm working on four tutorials at the same time. And this goes for all my developers as well. Um, because as long as you follow this, you're working almost like a machine. You're just checking, 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 all done, we're all good. So everything is checked. If there's something missing, we go into the document here, uh, the template, and update this template to make sure that we account for that. So of course, all of this wasn't there at the beginning. We covered most of it, but as we learned, oh, we need to do this, let's make sure we add it to the, the actual document. And that's why there is a document version number, because uh, depending on the version, we keep adding stuff, right? So people know that they have. Um, so it takes us all the way to the um, to here, where it says design document completed and ready for production. Send email to presenter. And here's another email. Remember all those touch points that I was talking to you about? We are all set for tomorrow's recording session. I'm including here for you a link to the script we'll be using in the studio and link to the script and blah, blah, blah. So this would this ends pre-production phase. We're literally the next day is when we start production phase. And I'm gonna I'll I'll go into these checklists afterwards, but we have one uh, for production, one for post. Um, I'll show you the design plan real quick. And I'm gonna start speeding things up here because I really want you guys to see the rest. But here's a design plan. Um, very simple stuff. Red, as you can see here, it says red fields need to be filled out by talent presenter. Okay. We try to make it very easy for them. What I tell them when I sit down with them is I go, look, there's a lot of stuff here, but really, if you're bored, read it. If you're not bored, or if, if, you're, um, if, if you're not bored, read everything, but if you're bored, just focus on the stuff that's in red. So stuff in red, they just need to fill out. I just need to know overview objectives and audience for the tutorial. This stuff, most of the stuff, I sit with them and fill it out before they leave during that uh, present or during that pre-production meeting. Um, I need to get some information about them. This is more information, what kind of software we're recording, do you need special data, 
Uh, do you need sample files? Okay, timeline. This is important right here. This thing is, this whole thing right here, they don't leave without date and time set here, agreed upon. We open up their calendars, we open up my calendar, the recording studio calendar, and we say, okay, the pre-production meeting is when we're meeting, so it's that day. But when are you gonna send me back this design document? Completed, we put the date and time. When is the recording, production? We put the date and time. I tell them when I'm gonna be editing and when we're gonna be publishing and marketing the tutorial. Everything is set up there, so when they leave, we have a timeline, okay? Now, I usually set up about an hour to an hour and a half meeting. We're usually done in about 40 minutes with this stuff. Below that is where I tell them, okay, this is where you're gonna be doing most of the work after they leave. They're gonna do an outline, and all we need from them is an outline, a pretty detailed outline, but an outline of what do you wanna cover from the software perspective? What functionality do you wanna cover? On the left, I say, hey, here's a sample outline of a current tutorial we've done, and it's pretty old now, but it's, it's, it's an outline of a current tutorial. Follow a similar outline on the right. That's all you have to do. Uh, try to be detailed as possible because what I'm going to do is when you send it back to me, I'm going to take this and break it apart into a script. And then I explain what the script is for them so they get it. Below that, we also have a tutorial assessment. Again, same format. Hey, on the left is a sample assessment of questions and answers. On the right, I just need you to replace question one with a question and give me a real answer and give me a couple of fake answers. Don't worry about what type of answers or what type of questions, we'll figure that out. We'll make it true, false, we'll make it multiple choice, hotspots, we'll figure that part out. But you just give me that information. And so what I'm doing is I'm producing, I'm letting them focus only on what's in, what I need from them, which is really the content, right? They're the experts on that. So again, leading them through the entire process as we spoke before is really important. So that's it, short document, not a lot here. Um, most of it completed during that pre-production meeting and then letting them go to finish the outline and sending the outline back to me. Once I get the outline back, I put it into a script, and this is in Google Docs normally. I put it into a script format, and the script format is basically has an intro. All our tutorials have an intro, so I welcome to another tutorial. I'm your host, blah, 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 blah. And most of our tutorial, or all of our tutorials have an outro. Thank you whoever the person is for presenting, I really appreciate it. In this tutorial, you've learned blah, 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 blah. So I tell them, hey, the intro and outro, don't worry about it. I write it completely based on the information you give me about you, right? So this is where I put in our guest presenter is the name, title, a little bio about them. The scenes one, two, and up to whatever number of scenes is, is I take the, the actual outline and break it apart into scene one, scene two, scene three. And what I do is I put in what they put in here, uh, what they put in the outline, I put it in the action VO. And I explain to them, just so you know, that's what you're gonna be showing and this is what you're gonna be talking about. I try not to write a script for them to say word by word, is I let them, because they already present to the customers constantly, they know the information really well. I just let them follow the outline. What I do stick with, it's very important, Every scene has to have a connecting opening and closing that allows us to go from one scene to the next one. So, for example, it could be here. Um, in in this section, in this scene, or you know, in this section, we're going to learn how to do X, Y, Z. And then the closing will be: Now that you've learned how to do X, Y, Z, let's move on to A, B, C, which is the next scene. And then we repeat that. So what I do is I write for them the opening and closing, and then just cut and paste from the outline what they're going to be covering right there. And that and they get it. And I also explain that, hey, don't worry, even though this is gonna be a 20 minute tutorial, we're not recording 20 minutes. We'll be recording one scene at a time. So if you mess up on something, don't worry about it. We can redo the scene, not a big deal. Alrighty, so let me close the script here. Uh, the presenter tips. So this is something that I sent to them. I cover, I, during pre-production, I show them this. I also send it to them after we meet. And then I also review it again when we're recording. But basically, this is stuff, it's our war list, basically. Stuff you learn in war, right? Um, put it together here. So things, uh, tips and tricks that, um, for them to be better when we're, when we're recording. So one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shut off devices. I tell them to drink some water, which by the way, I'm gonna follow my own advice as I'm getting some dry mouth here. <clears throat> I also tell them if you make a mistake for a second, uh, don't move the mouse, hit uh, say restart, that way it get, tells us that we need to edit this out. 
Um, the last one is the, the funny one. Uh, remove any jewelry that makes noise. And I tell you, it's, uh, it's our war list. It's because one time we had a presenter that came, didn't notice she was wearing a lot of jewelry. And we start recording, she moves the mouse, and I start hearing all this noise going up everywhere. So I'm like, oh, could you remove that? Would you mind removing that? Because it's picking, being picked up by the microphone. So of course we put it to in the list here. Um, again, this helps. This helps um, the 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 SME understand that you are a professional, that you know what you're doing, and that you're guiding them, you're helping them, you're making them feel more comfortable when they come over. They'll know what to do. So I'm going to close that up. Um, I'll open up the last one. We also do other types of uh, videos. They're more like video, video, traditional videos. So we have, for example, again, um, well, checklist, but you can see timeline. When we meet with them, timeline, 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 <laughs> timeline. I need to emphasize that because you meet, you set up dates, and you just do follow-ups. And yes, it doesn't always work, but I'm telling you 95% of the time, people will stick with it. Uh, this, we have like shot lists. For example, again, being super organized, we talked about organization. Um, what kind of shots do I need? What kind of posts do, because they, they um, our marketing department will give us the shots. I tell them what kind of post-production I want on them. I want. I tell them exactly how I want it delivered. Um, really, really important that you are very clear communication and you're very organized. All righty. We'll go ahead and close this. No, we're not going to save it. Yeah, all right, that's it. So let's continue on. I'm gonna start uh, speeding it up a little bit. All right, so production, now we're in production phase. Um, the, I'm gonna go through some of these issues we had. We didn't have any standards for recording. Um, we had no recording uh, standards defined. So we identified a software solution for recording, standardized on file types, put in place recording standards, example, Screen size, that is so, so, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that was so important to do that. For example, when we're recording the web app, it was a browser. Well, some people did a landscape browser, so it was super wide for the entire screen. Other people did it portrait style. Editing that was a nightmare because you tend, you wanna crop out the background, you wanna make things look really nice and professional. Well, there was no standard, so just getting that done uh, in edit was a pain. Um, some people had the bookmark showing, other people didn't, you know, had other things showing. There was absolutely no, stun, no standard set up. Again, lack of consistency, checklist, there's the producer's checklist is what really helped that out. Uh, we had no templates. Again, same thing, we need a template, create a set of templates to enable quick recording for the VO. So the intro and the outro, this is interesting. The intro and the outro is a specified set time. Um, created a, a, a Adobe Audition file that has markers that tells you exactly what to do when. And I'll show you that real quick if, if we have some time. Um, when, when the SMEs present, they didn't sound extremely professional. So we created this tip sheet that we showed you. We also allowed them to come over to the studio and present and just do whatever they want just for fun. Um, open open houses kind of thing where they can come in and check it out and sit down and listen to themselves. All this to encourage them to number one, be comfortable with the equipment, but also to for them to sound really professional, right? Because you want them to sound good. So production tips, set, set your recording standards, uh, come up with templates. Templates is gonna help you speed up through the entire process. Again, checklist, very important. Um, Standardize on your file formats. You don't want somebody, sh you know, recording in MP3, another one recording in 41 kilohertz uh, WAV file, another one doing 48 kilohertz, another one, you know, you get the, the idea. Make sure you standardize on all your formats so that way it's consistent across your entire team. Post haste. If anything out of here, uh, look it up. It's a simple free app. Um, it helps you speed up the process of just creating a project. It, it builds the entire uh, folder structure for you, and I'll show you how that works. It's free, 100% free. I love it. Um, recording tips. Um, like I said, I showed you the the, the the little sheet with recording tips. Make sure you give them that and uh, 
constantly feed them maybe via email too. Hey, just a quick reminder, here are some recording tips. So our production workflow, I'll go through that uh, real quick. Uh, we start out by prepping, right after we're done with pre-production, we go into production and we create this, uh, the project files, all the files that we need for production using post-haste. We set up the studio properly, we set up the computer, clean up background, you know, do everything we need to do. Uh, set up the browser to be the exact size. Um, when the SME comes in, we make sure they're comfortable. We, like I said, we mess around a little bit in there so they, they're comfortable, we bring in a glass of water. So when they get that dry mouth, you know, they, we explain, hey, take a sip of water, it's gonna help out. During recording, we record the intro and the extra that, that I do, so that way they get an idea of what it's gonna be like. They see me doing it. Then we do a test recording. I just let them play around a little more. All of this is to get them that when we actually are recording, they're not nervous anymore. To them, it's like the fourth or fifth time they've done it already. So for them, it's like, okay, no big deal. Then we record the tutorial and then we let them review the playback. And in general, we don't have to redo it. Sometimes they say, oh, you know, that really doesn't sound good. Do you mind if we redo it? If I agree that it doesn't sound good, I'll tell them, sure, let's redo it. If I don't agree, I'll tell them, I know to you it doesn't sound good, but trust me, during edit, you're gonna sound really good because I fix a lot of stuff. Don't worry about it. Because sometimes they'll say ahs and ums or they stutter. But when I'm listening to them record, I'm listening as an editor. So, and that's another thing as a producer, you need to, when you're listening during production time, you, you need to listen to what they're saying, both as an editor and as an SME. Does this data, does this make sense from the learner's perspective? But also, will I be able to edit all this stuff together into something that, that makes sense? So you have to play all those hats during recording. Um, right after we're done recording and they leave, I thank them, of course, there. Uh, take pictures with them so that way they get to post it. But afterwards, by the end of the day, I send them an email saying thank you again, and then saying how great they were, um, even if they weren't great, I'll still say that. Um, and uh, But most of them were are really great. Um, and then I'll tell them what are the next steps. I'm gonna be editing, uh, we'll take care of the rest, I'll be communicating with you, and then you'll be getting a, a, a review a copy real soon. So some of the documents, let me show you. All right, let's see, production. Okay, so uh, one thing I wanna show you real quick. So these are the desktop backgrounds that I created. And basically, and this would be, of course, I'm showing you here in the photo um, app, but this would be in your background. And this is basically, the screen is right here. So here, for example, say you literally, when you set up your, your um, computer, you change the background to step one background, which tells me where do I need to do the screen recording then step two, depending if you're recording a browser for, for the web app as a browser, it literally shows you the browser and you put your browser right over it, literally. You put it right there and cover it up. If that's good, then you're all set. Now, uh, if we're recording for the iPad, because we do a lot of iPad recording, and we have a mobile app that looks just like the iPad, so we don't need to mess around with the actual iPad, um, we set it up as either a portrait mode or landscape mode, and we put the browser are right above it when we're doing screen recording. Once you you put it there, then the last uh, background, this is for a different app. So if we're recording a, a different kind of app, um, then we set it back to completely gray. The browser will now be there sized perfectly. In post-production, I can easily edit this. I can crop it. All I need to do is crop one of my scenes and then cut and paste that crop, which we use Premiere Pro, cut and paste that crop into every single scene because it's perfectly set. That browser will be the same, not only on my tutorials, but all my other developers, because we're sticking to that same kind of style. So that's one thing, one way to uh, maintain consistency and speed up that process. Um, the producer's checklist, I'll show you real quick here. The production checklist. So you can see before the presenter arrives, there's a bunch of stuff to do. Set your background to step one, step two, step three, that's what I was just showing you. Um, connect your computer to the mixer. In, in, um, record the intro and outro. Get rid of um, the bookmark. Add on icons, remove. Clear the cache. Download files, removed. Uh, close tabs. You get the point. Um, all the developers follow this. We're all the same now. There is no more inconsistency across the team. 
after the presenter arrives, what do we do? We get some water for them. We give them a tour of the studio again. We put up recording signs outside so people don't make noises. Uh, we, like I said, we bring the, the water bottle. We go through the presenter tips. After presenter leaves, send them an email. Here's the email that you need to send them. Again, consistency checklist. If you follow this, you, you didn't miss anything. If there's something that we find out later that isn't here, we add it to here. For the next tutorial, it'll be accounted for. Very important to be able to stay organized. All right, and then the last thing I wanted to show you for production, which is really super cool, is this Post-Taste app. All right, so um, basically in Post-Taste, and this is free, like I said, it's uh, you can get it, Digital Rebellion. Just do a search for Post-Haste. Uh, they have it for Windows and Mac. But basically, you create templates of, of files and folders. Here's an overview video template, a tutorial template. So what happens is when I go and create a new project, so we're about to go into the, uh, into the recording studio, right? And let's say we're doing a tutorial on intro to Google Chrome. I just type in the, the name, and this I've typed in, you can actually edit um, the parameters. You can add more parameters that you can use. But let's say we're doing a project called Intro to Google. I say create project. Okay, it created the project. Now I want you to see this, which is super cool. So there's my entire, this is for every, again, now for post, um, we've got the entire folder structure, the same for every developer. What that means is that because all developers know how to do this, any developer can edit anything. There's no guessing, well, wait a minute, where did you put in the, uh, where did you put in the scratch files? Where did you put in the audio or the video um, or the assessment audio or the tutorial? There's no guessing because we use an app. We've standardized on the folder structure. It even creates the Premiere Pro project file. So if I open this up, and hopefully everything is still showing properly, but if I open this up and we'll wait for this thing to load up, Inside this file, there's a, a structure already of how we keep everything going. Let's see if we can uh, let it load here. All right, so you can see here's my project. I'm gonna maximize this. And you can see that it's already created. It's got my background that I need, all the sequences that we're gonna use, uh, folders for my VO. Uh, the way we do our editing, which I was gonna show you later, is we create sections. Sections go into scenes, scenes go into the main sequence. So we can edit things easier that way. But my point is that it took me two seconds to create the entire folder structure with all the files that I need to go into the recording studio and then to do editing. So you can see how things um, get uh, sped up very quickly that way. So let me go to here, let's go ahead and delete that. All right, so that's that. Yeah, let's go back to post-production here. Okay, so we'll go into post-production. Polina, am I doing okay still? This should go pretty quickly. Okay, how much time do you think you need? Oh, what time is it now? Let's see, maybe we can do it in 10 minutes. Okay, so if we could do it in 10 minutes and then we'll have some like, I'm sorry, have five minutes for Q&A, would that work for you? For Q&A? Yeah, that sounds good. So okay. I'll go through this quickly. I okay. just wanted them to see the post-production process. So okay, I'm gonna go through it. Yeah, let's, do let's it. go through this. <laughs> let's do it, let's get started, all right. Um, all right, so every new project, we had to reinvent the wheel. That was the problem. What we did is created After Effects templates, what they call Mogurts, um, to use in Adobe Premiere Pro to speed up the entire editing process. We have a standard intro and an extra created After Effects templates that you drag and drop and you change just the title, who the host is, who the presenter is. The music is already built in and that immediately cut the, the process of doing our intros and extra every single time with the other tool that we were using um, to now dragging and dropping and just changing some parameters. And that's because of the After Effects templates that allow you to create them, customize them how you want to, then publish them, and then developers just use them um, like they were built into Premiere Pro. Um, created uh, Premiere Pro presets. Again, everything is so you can drag and drop. It takes a little while to set up all this. I'm not gonna lie to you, it took months to get all of these templates going, but the beautiful thing is that once you got that going, then you just scale super quickly. Uh, we share a lot of our, li our of these templates uh, for Premiere Pro through the CC libraries. Um, 
editing took that was another issue editing took a long time because as our, our projects got super big uh timeline was like an hour tutorial um the the tool we were using just was just slowing to a crawl so we switched to the adobe cc suite for the editing part of it um and that just because uh, premiere pro is made for editing large movies anyway that really a, a 40 minute tutorial or a 30 minute tutorial is no big deal and because the tool was so slow, the previous tool, any changes killed us. Anything we had to go back and change was just a major pain. So we, we, we submit. We would send in and say, "Hey guys, if you have any changes, please email us." And then we go, "Don't email us. Don't email us." But you know, we always did. Um, so editing is um, the solution with Premiere Pro. That just for editing purposes, that just uh, um, helped quite a bit. Let me. Um, keep going here. Uh, consistency, again, the checklist, the producer's checklist help maintain that consistency uh, when we're delivering and doing the editing. Uh, people really, the developers really understood what to do in every single step. So when we delivered the final project, it was perfect, or at least it was consistent. And then rendering time. This was the huge part. Do you remember at the beginning, the two big things was uh, SME's uh, feedback or approvals and rendering time? Uh, we went on a 15-minute video with the tool we were using. I kid you not. Uh, it would take us up to four hours, not a joke, to render out. So imagine why I'd say, please don't email me changes because any changes we have to re-render again. What we did is we built a, um, a rendering machine. And it's not really that hard to build a rendering machine. It's just a custom PC that we build with an i7 8-core, uh, put in a GTX 1080 graphics card. Uh, which is used for gaming and rendering and all that, and look at the outcome. We literally went from a four-hour rendering to 13 minutes for a 15-minute video. So faster than than real-time rendering. The other thing that I did is, because I created this as a, as a rendering machine, I, I set up um, folders, uh, mapped folders to the rendering machine, and imp it's called a, a queue and an output, and literally all the developers, all they do is put in the Premiere Pro project in the queue, uh, the rendering machine kicks in because there's watch folders looking for it. It'll actually render and then it'll put it in their output folder. They'll get a notification. That means that now they're free on their machine. Not only that they don't have to get stuck even for 13 minutes, they don't have to get stuck at all. They can continue working while the rendering machine is going is going and doing this. The rendering machine cost the company that I worked for $2,000. It was a custom one that we put together. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of money, but really it's nothing considering that now we went, instead of having, you know, two tutorials in one day for rendering purposes, we could have 20 tutorials rendered in one day because of the uh, speed enhancements. All right, I already covered that. And then post-production workflow real quick. Uh, once we're done with production, meaning they left, we have, we're done recording, we have all the files. We take it, and this is in the uh, producer's checklist. We organize and clean up the entire project, uh, put it into folders, back up everything, clean up audio, sync it to video, uh, set up the Premiere Pro project as I showed you. Then we jump into edit. We do a rough edit, we do a VFX cut, and we do a final cut. Rough cut means that we, we're getting rid of all the, I was gonna say, we're getting rid of all the, um, the bad stuff. I was gonna use a different word but we're getting rid of all the bad stuff that we don't uh, that we don't want, right? That just builds the story, it makes it compact, right? It makes it a story that you can watch. The VFX cut is when we go into and actually add call outs, we do zoom ins, you know, all the fancy stuff. And then the final cut is when we do the final adjustment and then rendering out. So then we also create the assessment and then we render everything out. We QA it, render out, we do a final QA and then for review purposes. We used to send out an email or putting on YouTube and wait for them to send us an email with comment. We used frame.io, which is a web-based uh, app that allows you to, um, people allows you to collaborate with others and at, at, a, at a specific time in the video, they can put comments. They can even circle and go, hey, you see this here? We need to change this. The other beautiful thing about that one that I really like a lot is that they have a plugin directly into Premiere Pro so when I'm editing, I can see all the changes they want in the corner. I can click on a change and it syncs my timeline to that particular place where they want me to change with a bookmark and what that change is. So it really speeds up that whole process. Okay, let me show you real quick. 
And believe it or not, Polina, I'm almost done. I, I think that was faster than uh, 10 minutes. Yeah, very much. All right. So let's open up the producer's checklist and go to the final part. So here you go. Remember, cleanup, organization, rough cut, VFX cut, final cut, assessment, and QA. Everything is broken down. It tells you exactly what to do. Again, it's not about making people act like robots because, you know, you're all working together. But the, the, the reality is that, you know, we're not making um, Hollywood films here. Every, every tutorial is not going to be different and shouldn't be different because you have to maintain consistency. So coming up with a list like this will definitely help in that consistency. And it'll help in people not missing anything, right? If there's an issue, then either it wasn't in this list or they just missed it because it was in this list and they just didn't see it. The final one we have in the same checklist is in a publish. So in the publish, you can see send out frame.io link and then um, it says there what to say. Uh, publishing, what do we do? We build, how do we build it all? Marketing, how are we gonna announce the course? Where are we announcing it? What, are we, what should we say? And then clean up, we move things over into a backup folder, move them out of the, our Google from in progress to complete it. Again, everything, and this takes us from the idea to the point when we're done completely. So that's the producer's checklist. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you real quick is there a real uh, tutorial. I'm not gonna play it. I'm just gonna show you um, the edit so you can see uh, why the we sped up so much with the edit. Um, we'll let it load up here real quick. All right, there it is. Media pending, that means it's loading. All right. So like I explained to you guys before, I'm gonna show you real quick. We have the main, this is what we render out. This is what's gonna go out rendered. But then we have scenes and within scenes we have sections. So for example, here's the main, um, I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Here's the main file, the main video tutorial. That's, you can see it's already, that's what it looks like when you know we're showing everything. So for example, let's say there's an issue here. I can go into, this is the main tutorial, this is scene two. I can, and remember, scene two ties to scene two of the script. So I can always go back to the script that way. So everything ties together. But now we're, now we're in scene two, and scene two is made up of, this is, the v, this is the VFX cut. You can see we have all the zoom ins, all the call outs. But now I'm gonna go into the rough cut. This is the rough cut, section 0201. That's my rough cut that helps me, that I can now clean up whatever issue we had that they you know, gave feedback on. Um, so. That's that. The only other thing I wanted to show you is those uh, templates that I was talking about. If you can see here, here are all the templates that I created. Uh, call outs, these are all actual motion graphics templates created specifically for my company. Um, and we're using it within our company, but it's got all our standards, colors, music, everything. So literally all they have to do is drag and drop into a sequence and they can use it. So for example, here, you see this is a section break. If I click on here, you can see right there, adding job types, section two. I can easily, if this was section three, and I, I we needed to add in more job types. Now we have it, and it's already done, and it's got the music. This we used to do constantly over and over when we used a different tool that didn't allow us to create templates. With this templates, we can easily adapt. For example, now because I made this longer here, you can see that the logo should be really here. So if I click on the logo, I, uh, knowing that that was gonna happen in the template, we accounted for that. So we can move it, okay, we're done. So we just changed via a template, the intro for the next section. And that to show you the power of creating templates, regardless of what tool you use, whether you use Premiere Pro or using any other tool. I know iSpring has lots of templates that, that will allow you to do stuff like this as well. Um, the key is create templates and make the job easier for you so you are consistent and much quicker. So with that said, I am at the end. Uh, our production time dropped literally from five weeks. We remember we started with that problem, Houston, we have a problem, it's five weeks, to one week in 80% improvement. So now we're putting out between the developers, we're putting out between three and four tutorials per week versus one tutorial every five weeks. 
huge improvement. And that's because we went from being a producer to a top-notch uh, producer. Um, I think that's it. I don't need to go into the tool set since they already, they already saw that. So um, I just wanted to thank you guys for not falling asleep, I hope, through the presentation. And uh, Polina, back to you. Thank you very much, Marcelo. And um, I hope, I mean, I saw a lot of great comments about this presentation, so it looks like our attendees really liked it. Good. I'm glad. And, yeah, so um, let's get down to the questions. I think we can spend five minutes for a couple of them. Um, sure. So Alvaro, Alvaro asks, um, what app did you use um, during the preparation phase? You mentioned some application. During the preparation Prep phase? What do you mean by the preparation phase? Like um, during pre-production or? Are you talking about the, the post-haste? Maybe that one? You're talking about this one, post-haste? The one that creates the folder structure? Otherwise, for scripting, we're, we just created a, uh, a Google Doc for scripting for the design document, uh, the spreadsheet, the producer checklist. It's just a Google Doc. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I hope that, that answers, answers your question. Yeah, I hope that yeah. answers your question. And then Tom says, I give my SMEs the singer tape for water. Room temperature water so it doesn't shock the vocal cords. Are there any other tips to get SMEs in a better voice? Um, actually, yes, there's, um, they can I literally go out for a walk, um, uh, for some reason that actually, I don't know if they get more relaxed or it does something to them, but they warm up a little bit. And I literally tell them, Hey, literally go out for a quick walk, or I go out for a walk uh, just to chat with them for five minutes and then come back. And I think they seem to be more of a relaxed state, which allows them to be more of a natural voice. Mm -hmm. Um, but the water does the thing. <laughs> Uh, pretty much. I also uh, guide them into, hey, let's project better. It's funny because I had one presenter that said, um, very soft-spoken person, just very, very soft-spoken person. <laughs> and I go, so when we record, um, are you going to be able to project? She goes, yeah, I think I should be able to. And then we start recording and she goes, well, here's how we, and she didn't project. So, you know, sometimes you just have to work with what you've got. You know, that's what uh, fix it in post is. Awesome, thank you. And Trevor says, uh, any tips on getting SMEs uh, recruitment in, cl um, I'm sorry, in Clashen? How do you get it, past training is not part of my job department mentality? Oh, yeah, 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 perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, okay, you're going to laugh, but what one thing we've done is um, uh, we've actually given away uh, gift cards to like Starbucks or some coffee shop uh, mm -hmm. to people that, that do like two tutorials in one month. That's one way of doing it, uh, given that kind of incentive. The other one is we're actually starting now to partner with the managers of the department and make that part of their uh, goals also to do because by them training, they also learn the tool much better, which makes them better when they're talking to their customers anyway. So partner with the SMEs uh, manager and say, hey, is there a way that between, you, you know, we have our goals for the month or for the year or for the quarter, whatever it is, your goals, that we need to deliver X amount of tutorials. Is there a way we can add a goal on your end? Because we can't deliver without you guys, the, the reality is. Can we add goals on your end for your, for your SMEs to say, hey, I need to do one tutorial a month? Um, that's one way. The other thing is make it sexy, make it fun. Um, like I said, that's why we have the Slack channel mm -hmm. where we call it the Walk of Fame, post pictures. People get excited about that and they go, oh, I want to, I, I want to do this. Um, if you make it boring, nobody's going to want to do it. But if you make it like fun and sexy, they're all going to go, yeah, I want to do this. It's fun. And then literally when they're there, make that process super fun for them. Make it where they're having fun, where they're enjoying themselves, because then you'll get them back. If you, if you, um, now, if you don't make it a pleasurable experience, I mean, they'll do it that day, but then they're never coming back. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. And there was another question from Nadia. Is there any difference between producer, developer, and instructional designer? Producer, developer, and instructional designer. Sometimes you have to be all of the above. Um, 
you know, I mean, it depends on how big your team is. Sometimes you'll have instructional designers that just focus on, you know, the architecture of, of the, of the content. Um, and, but sometimes you're going to have to be all of them in our case, we're really, um, we're, we're wrapped up into one We're the producer, we're the instructional designers, and then we work with the SMEs. So, um, there, there is a difference in big organizations and usually smaller organizations or smaller departments within big organizations. Cause you, you can have a big company that really just still has a very small training department. Mm -hmm. um, they're gonna be the same. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And another, I think this will, will be the last question, sure. but um, a lot of people were asking if there's any chance of getting copy of the um, documents that you were sharing, but I would <laughs> kept I replying sorry. to anyone yeah. that we will be sharing the recording of this webinar plus the presentation, PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, that yeah the, the presentation in PDF format and the recording, but the actual documents, unfortunately, I can't. Sorry about that. Yeah. All right. So again, thank you very much to all of you guys who have attended our webinar and thank you very much to you, Marcelo. Thank you for inviting me. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. And here's a very nice comment from Matt. Heads off to you, Marcelo. You've learned the secrets of success, lots of hard work <laughs> and clear communication. Your approach looks rock solid. Thanks for sharing. Thank you for that comment. That's a really nice comment. <laughs> right. And thanks from Bryce. Thank you very much, guys, for attending. And I will see you on March 20th, where we will be talking about how to launch e-learning in the company and get results in two months and how to do all of that with a single solution from iSpring. So I hope to see all of you there and you are welcome to sign up for this webinar at iSpringSolutions.com slash webinars. This is our dedicated page. And again, hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thanks, Marcelo. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Polina. Have a good one. Goodbye.